Welcome. My name is Georges Verbena and I'm an asteroid astrologer. And this video is about Merlin, <laughs> Merlin the wizard in your natal chart. Yes. So there's an asteroid called Merlin. You can check out on astro.com the number 2598 in the asteroid list and you will find Merlin in your natal chart. So what does Merlin mean? What is it about? Let's start with the mythology of Merlin first. So if you're watching this video, you probably found that Merlin is somewhere in your chart, hopefully in a prominent position in a five degree orbit around a natal planet. If you have it in the house, in the sign, without any conjunctions, it is not so easy to understand the prominence of that because is not really prominent at all, unless it's a conjunction with something. So Merlin was a famous wizard of King Arthur, who was an advisor and a magician to serve as a counselor to guide the king towards his success. However, after all of that, he eventually left to the woods and met with a lady of the lake, which, by the way, is um, an archetypal manifestation of Lilith or Morrigan. There is a reference to the free Morigna in ancient pagan myth. So if you want to understand Merlin, you need to understand also his relationship to Lilith archetypically and how he fell in love with Lilith, aka the lady of the lake. Yeah, if you, you can look online, which was a uh, nymph that lived in a lake which gave King Arthur his sword and Merlin fell in love with her and then according to some tales of the story he was killed by her because he fell madly in love and uh, it was like a spell was on him he became obsessed with love and this eventually led to his downfall there are other mythology um, stories in which he is confirmed to be some kind of madman. Because even in the Celtic language, the combination of the derivative of his name, which is Merlin Myrdin, Mir means mad and Din means man, which means madman. So you can alternatively understand Merlin in your chart if you just use the keyword madman <laughs> to describe whatever that is that you have. And a madman that has some kind of shamanic powers and that goes through some kind of metamorphosis or shape-shifting. Because Merlin took on the, the many shapes and forms of many animals and mythological creatures to perform some kind of trickery and to, to do certain roles to accompany King Arthur and to interact with the Lady of the Lake. Of course, Merlin inherited certain supernatural powers and abilities, so he points at those powers in your natal chart. But those powers are connected to madness and connected to a loss of control or some kind of obsession. So there's a certain you know, connection with Lilith because it's exactly how Lilith interacts in the chart. But this, in case of Merlin, he shapeshifts very easily and he becomes obsessed with the object that he's focused on. So the house and the sign shows you the obsession of Merlin. That shows you where Merlin gets stuck in his readings, in his um, study, because he's a great scientist, so to speak, and he invented many spells. He was uh, famous for many things that he had done to become this special um, mentor to King Arthur. Because of course, Merlin was born also from a special upbringing to give him the supernatural powers. He was born for, of a mortal woman and an incubus. And an incubus, and just like Lilith, is a demon. A demon in male form that seeks to have sexual intercourse by sleeping with women which is, of course, the corresponding spirit in female form to the succubus. So Merlin is born from 
a male sex spirit and a mortal woman. Okay, so he's born out of demonic forces. <laughs> Great! Again, a connection of Lilith. Again, no surprise that he fell in love with the Lady of the Lake. Now, you need to understand what the Lady of the Lake is actually about. Because she represents the fallen angel archetype in certain mythological meanings of Morrigan, the witch. Because Morrigan, if you look it up online, is associated with the Lady of the Lake. Yes, I know these things can be confusing to some people, but if you do your research, you'll find there's correspondences between many different archetypal figures and how they are all exactly the same person. The occupation of the Lady of the Lake is that of enchantress. She enchants people and objects alike. She has Venusian charming qualities in which she uses her beauty to seduct Merlin and sometimes other significant uh, figures. She gave rise to Lancelot and other certain heroes. And um, she is supposed to have killed Merlin. There's other stories in which Merlin was killed because he went mad, he turned psychotic. And some uh, random people impaled him and then drowned him. So there's a connection to psychoticism in the natal chart. Wherever you have Merlin, there is a danger of going insane or going crazy and then being killed because of what you find. Of the rabbit hole that you dive deep, deep into. The rabbit hole you get obsessed with and your head gets so deep down into the rabbit hole, you lose yourself in it. So there's, an, there's a danger of dissolving boundaries too easily. So Merlin is a psychic indicator in the chart. Because that's exactly how people become psychic. Because they're cracked open like an egg. And then of course if you're cracked open, you no longer have a shell around you. You no longer have psychic protection. Your protection is disabled. So Merlin disables protective mechanisms in that area of your chart, which normally keep you sane and functioning in society as a human being. Merlin seeks to dissolve that functioning, to allow psychic powers to come in. And um, that planet is going to bring those powers to you. And Merlin is going to give you the feeling that, oh no, if I allow that planet to be unlocked, that sign, that house to be unlocked, I'll have to get my head a little bit out of a window and there is this kind of uh, temptation there. Yeah? Lilith, Arca the Lady of the Lake, is the temptation to Merlin. So why is it a tempta temptation? To fall victim to chaos. To fall victim to the divine dark feminine. The dark feminine tempts Merlin because that's where he gets his powers from, of course. He gets his powers from dark forces, right? He gets his powers from demonic sources. Of course, according, according to the story, you can reinterpret this by looking at the correspondences. Because the Gnostics refer to these dark forces as simply the forces that traumatize you. And somehow through this trauma, it creates a change in your personality. And this change can give rise to unusual abilities that are considered to be unnatural, like a mutant, like a mutation. And of course, this mutation leads to troubles, problems, isolation, mental health issues. So there can be mental health issues where Merlin is concerned in the chat. There can be a feeling of isolation. There can be a feeling that this area of your life is blocked unless you allow yourself to be a little bit woo, -woo. to be a little bit whoop, you know, like Merlin. You need to be a little bit crazy to be that powerful, to have that kind of role. Of course, Merlin was a fictional person. He's not considered to be real. However, 
if you study these occult sciences and these occult mythologies, it refers to some kind of creation myth that has to do with the psychic origin of certain cultures, certain tribes in Ireland, which had magical abilities. So Merlin could point out that this planet in your lineage has some kind of origin somewhere. If you have connection between Merlin and the fourth house or the moon, it's clear that there's psychic lineage with a mother. This can also be connected to Merlin and Venus, because Venus also belongs to the mother. If Merlin is connected to your sun, to your Mars or Saturn, then there will be psychic origin in the father. If there is a connection between Merlin and the Ascendant, the Descendant, the Midhaven, the Icy, any of the angles, then Merlin is an integrated part of the personality that needs to be actualized throughout life and developed. So that means you could be the one who brings it in from past lives into the family where it lies dormant but hasn't been actualized yet. You are the fertilizer for that aspect. And of course, that can be very difficult because Merlin basically represents the archetype of the male witch or the wizard. Now, the wizard is some kind of iconic figure because he represents somebody who has a structured way of dealing with magic. He's not into chaos magic like sexual magic or losing your consciousness in order to be taken over like a priestess. He's not like that. He's more like a teacher, has more connection to the hierophant and the priest. But uh, as a mentor, he has mercurial qualities. So he uses his mind, his rational mind, to teach. However, his powers come from the irrational mind, which is the succubus-incubus connection with demonic forces, which belong to the 12th house, or Pisces. So there's a connection also between Merlin and Pisces. I would suggest that Merlin is at home in Pisces. And if not, then, it is, it, then perhaps it's at home in Gemini or Virgo. Any of the mutable signs that are connected to magic or the rational mind or imagination. Because there's a connection. If you have Merlin in the chart somewhere, he is going to help you to draw out hidden information, hidden knowledge, to teach yourself how to deal with the occult part of that area in your life. Yeah, the house is the, is the area of your life, which needs to be occult in your dealing with it because of Merlin. If not, then Merlin will be blocked and there will be no access to the psychic side of it. However, should you work with Merlin and unlock those dynamical um, imaginative visionary qualities, you run into the risk of going crazy, which is the psychotic side of Merlin. So it's a double-edged sword in the natal chart, like any asteroid is, of course, like always. There's a repressed a part of the asteroid and a healed part of the asteroid. The repressed part, you're denying everything, you're in your mind, you're like, no, 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 I can't go crazy, blah, 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 you're gaslighting yourself. So Merlin can point at gaslighting tendencies. Or you're like questioning yourself constantly, like, should I really be doing this? No, 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 I cannot possibly know that much. And then you do know that much. And you do need to do that thing. And when you do that thing and everybody calls you crazy, and when you're wondering, am I crazy? And when you actually go crazy, if you're not careful. I'm sorry, but the asteroids aren't exactly supposed to be. I'm sorry. I, were you looking for some kind of uh, beneficiary like Venus or Jupiter? That's not what any of the asteroids are. I don't care how great it sounds to have Merlin somewhere in the chat. You're not going to get any of the juice without the work. So I hope this actually helps you to understand a little bit better. Of course, if you want to know more, I suggest you check out Merlin in the mythology online. And there you can find out more about how this Merlin could connect to your life, archetypically speaking, because you will run through some of those dyn dynamics. Now, me personally, I have Venus conjunction Merlin in an exact 
position. 29 degrees, Venus and Gemini. Conjunction 29 degrees, Merlin and Gemini. Like I said, it is possible that Merlin finds his own sign in Gemini or Pisces. Venus suggests, for example, that I attract people who are a little bit psychic, cotic. <laughs> and of course, when it comes to connections and relationships, it's not an easy placement, to say the least. Because if you want to be recognized, for your abilities it's quite difficult in the Saturnian realm if you deal with any of these occult objects don't expect to be appreciated valued or acknowledged should you do the work and should you be healthy in understanding and integrating these asteroids because everybody will think you you're just a crazy person and you need to be in the loony bin singing loony tunes which, of course, is always a danger in any case. <laughs> but allow fear to blind you and your third eye will be blocked. And you then you can't figure out anything anyways. And you're just in darkness where nothing meaningful or magical ever happens. And that is, of course, the beauty of all these asteroids. That they teach you something magical about yourself. That, of course, you are afraid of. <laughs> you are afraid. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an asteroid, which is a fragment of a planet. Now, if this helps you to understand more and better in your natal chart, I would really appreciate a like. And if you're interested in learning about other asteroids, specific requests, leave me a comment because there is lots of asteroids and um, I do asteroid videos on request after I study them and research them and understand them. Not all of them. But whatever requests you make, I will look at it. And if you are interested in a personal reading, in a natal chart reading, to understand your own chart and to understand the asteroids in your life and the different aspects and fixed stars and psychological meanings and mythological meanings and archetypal meanings of your chart and your life, which are extremely specific, specific, so specific you think you are crazy for even suggesting that it could be that specific, but it is that specific. And you're looking for that? I am available at all times on Messenger or e email. Reach out whenever you want and stay tuned for my next videos. Thanks for watching and see you again.